This week we're going to learn about the data class decorator. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. Hope everybody had a great Labor Day weekend, and now it's time to get back to MetPy Mondays. So this week, I wanted to look at how we store data in Python. And let's say that we've got a surface observation, a temperature, a dew point, and a pressure, a very simple observation. Let's think about how we could store that. Well, we could use a dictionary, which might look something like this, dictionary observation, temperature is 26. Let's say the dew point is 23, and the pressure is 1,012 millibars. I'm going to copy and paste that, and we already start seeing some of the pains of doing things this way. So there's my three observations. Maybe I could put them in a list or in a tuple. So something like that. If I want to look at an observation, I get this somewhat useful printout. And if I want to compare two observations, does that work? Well, you might try something like Diab1 is equivalent to Diab1. And we get that that's true. So you think, ah, this works. But let's look is Diab1 equal to Diab3? In this case, we see it is, but we've got a lot of copies of the same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and change one of these values. And we see in this case that we get a true comparison, though there can definitely be some gotchas in there in doing this. A more convenient way might be to think about using a class. Right now we have to have all of these pretty lengthy names typed out over and over again, making our program long and maybe not so readable. So we could define a class. Class surface observation. Our class needs a dunder init method. And it's going to take self, temperature, dew point, pressure. And we're going to set self.temperature to the temperature that's passed to our dunder init. Same with dew point. And same with pressure. So to use this, we would say our ob1 is surface observation 26, 23, 10, 12. We'll create ob2 and ob3. We'll change a value there. Maybe we'll change several. Now let's see what's the representation. Well, not very useful. It's a memory address of where this exists because we haven't implemented any of the dunder methods to print or represent this. We could do that, certainly. It's more code. What about comparisons? Is ob1 equivalent to ob3? It is not. It's not the same object. Ob1 is equivalent to ob1 because it's the same object. So this works, but it's maybe not quite as useful as we would like. Now, Panda's data frame is a fine representation, but what if I needed to find some custom methods on this? That's a little more difficult to do with the data frame. Or I've got some sort of data that doesn't fit well into a data frame paradigm. This is where the data class comes in. This is available after Python 3.7, including 3.7. From data classes, we're going to import the data class decorator. I'm going to use the data class decorator on a class called new surface observation. And we do have to use type ants here, but notice I'm not going to define a dunder. Temperature dew point is a float, pressure is a float, 
And that's all it takes. It's very, very simple. I don't have to define that dunder method. And now I can copy and paste this block of code, put the word new in front, new observation. Notice that, that just works. If I print in ob1, it has a representation that makes sense. It's a new observation type and it prints out all of its attributes. But most interestingly, the dunder equal method has been implemented for us. New ob1 and new ob3, not the old ob, new ob, are equivalent. So just using this decorator and type hints, one, makes your code a little more bug proof, a little more readable, and gives you a way to implement a class whose sole purpose is to hold data with fewer lines of code in a more readable way. This is a really handy little feature that I certainly am finding myself using more and more. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you on next week's MatPy Monday.